The Sony a6000 has basically set the bar as one of the best beginner photography cameras since it was released back in 2014. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the settings that I use for photography with this camera. So if you're a beginner and you just bought this camera, this would be a perfect guide for you just to get into some of the settings if you don't really know what to do and what to set anything at. And this is going to be pretty in-depth, so go grab your popcorn. And before we get started, make sure you go down and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos and I'd really appreciate it. So go do that and now let's get into the best beginner photography settings for the Sony a6000. Alright, so let's hop right into the menu here. And we're going to start off on the first row and the first page. So right here, first things first, image size. What you're going to do is keep this right at the 24M, which stands for 24 megapixels. It'll use the full image sensor and the full resolution that the camera can produce. There's not really any use in going any lower than this. It's just going to produce worse images and uh, you really just don't want to do that. So keep it right here, L24M. And then if we head down here, aspect ratio. So you're going to keep this at 3 to 2. Uh, that's the native aspect ratio of the sensor. It's going to be a little bit more of a square image than the 16 by 9. Uh, for example, 16 by 9 is like what uh, normal videos are filmed in, so how it's kind of longer and probably what you're watching this in right now. Meanwhile, 3 by 2 is going to be a little more square, but that's what you're going to want to keep it at because 16 by 9 will crop in on the sensor a little bit. And you really just don't want to do that most of the time, so just keep it at 3 to 2. It's going to be perfectly fine, and you can always crop in uh, in post if you'd like to. So right down here, quality. This is where you can play around with things a little bit more. So if you're just getting started, if you're a beginner, and you don't want to bring your images into like an editing software, if you just want good images straight out of the camera, what you want to do is use fine right here. So this is just going to be a JPEG image. It's going to be really good quality and everything you're going to need for just using an image straight out of the camera. Now if you have something like Adobe Lightroom or if you like to edit your pictures in a software after you take them, RAW is really going to be where you want to be at. So, so RAW basically saves all the sensor uh, data and so you're able to change it in post uh, like white balance and pretty much everything that the sensor captures it just saves in the image. They're really high quality files but they're really big as well. So that's only really going to be if you want to edit your pictures in post before you put them on Instagram or whatever you're going to do with your images. And so a good middle ground is right here, RAW plus JPEG. Uh, this is going to be if you know, you're know you not sure, maybe you're just going to post it straight to Instagram. Maybe you want to really edit it and uh, make it look a lot better. So this right here basically saves a RAW and a JPEG uh, every time you take a picture. So it'll save two files. It'll use up a lot more space on your SD card but it's going to be a lot more useful depending on your application and if you're not really sure what you want to do with the pictures. Uh, but again, it's going to use up more space on your SD card. But that is where I keep it at, just in case you never really know, uh, you know what you want, if you want a RAW or if you just want a JPEG. Uh, right here, don't worry about these. And file format, that's for videos, so I'm not going to be going over that in this video. But if you do want to see a video dedicated to the best video settings for the A6000, uh, definitely let me know in the comments and like this video and subscribe. Uh, I can make some more videos about video settings or really anything else. Just let me know in the comments what you want to see with the A6000. So let's head over to page two and right here record setting that also has to do with video. So we're not going to be worrying about that. But drive mode, this right here is basically depending on if you want to just take one picture when you press the shutter button or if you want to take multiple pictures. So single shooting is when you press the shutter button, it takes a picture and that's it. If you hold it down, it, nothing happens. I'm holding it down right now and it just took that one picture still. So that's single shooting. And now if you want to do continuous shooting, this is basically if maybe if you're shooting sports or uh, you know something that's moving fast and you just want to take a bunch of pictures or just to make sure you get the right shot. If I hold down the shutter button now, it just took a bunch of pictures. So that'll be better if you're shooting sports or any fast moving subjects. So I usually keep mine at single shooting because I usually you know, plan out a picture, get it how I want it, and then take it. So I keep it at single shooting. Uh, but again, if you want to do sports shooting or any like, you know, a kid running around or something like that, continuous shooting will be a lot better. It's just going to take up more space on your SD card and fill it up with a lot more pictures. So right here, flash mode. If you're going to be using the flash, uh, then just keep this at fill flash. It'll basically just use the flash that's built into the camera to uh, just light things up a little better. Flash comp, keep that at zero. Red eye reduction, I keep that off. 
but if you do have problems with getting you know the red eyes and pictures you could turn that on it's just going to basically uh, process the picture in the camera and try to get rid of it I usually keep it off I don't really have a use for it and I can always fix that in an editing software as well focus mode so this one is a big one depending on what sort of uh, lens you have maybe you can only use manual focus if it's a vintage lens but with the lens I have on it right now the 16 to 50 kit lens I usually keep this at continuous autofocus. So what this means, continuous autofocus, as long as you're holding the shutter down, it's gonna keep trying to focus on something and uh, keep trying to acquire focus. So it's always gonna be searching, always gonna be focusing on something. Now, if you head over to out of single shot autofocus, which is the other one that you might wanna use, basically when you half press the shutter button or you press the shutter button, It'll find focus once and then it'll stop it right there and just keep it locked on. So if you have something that isn't moving, you know, if your camera's on a tripod, you're taking a picture of uh, like a mountain, single shot of focus is going to be great because it's not going to keep trying to figure something out when the mountain's obviously not going to move. And if your camera's on a tripod, that's not going to move. So you really only need to get focus once and you can take as many pictures as you want. I usually keep this at continuous though. Because, uh, you know, if I'm moving around a lot, you're always going to want to keep the focus on something. And then, obviously, there's manual focus. And that's if you want to find the focus yourself, which you can do. But if you're a beginner, I'd probably keep on autofocus. But you can put it in manual and just mess around with it and try to get focus on, uh, you know, whatever you want. It's a little bit more versatile than autofocus. But again, you're going to have to make sure that everything's in focus. Otherwise, your picture is not going to turn out very well. And the rest of these options, I wouldn't really worry about right now if you're a beginner and uh, I just keep it at either continuous or single shot or manual focus. So I keep mine at continuous and uh, that's that. So head over to page three and right here, focus area. So this is basically where the camera will be looking to focus. So if you go to wide, it's going to be looking over basically the whole screen, the whole viewing area to figure out what it should focus on. So if something's over here and it's, you know, close to the camera, it's going to focus on it. If something's over here, it'll do the same. Basically anywhere in the screen, it'll try to focus. Now, if we take it over to zone, now it's basically just a certain zone that it's gonna try to focus. So you can move this zone around, but only the stuff inside of this zone right here, it'll try to focus on. Everything outside, it won't even worry about, it won't even think about trying to focus on. So that's good if you have maybe just a smaller or maybe a person that's in one side of the screen and you don't really want it to get off track and try to focus on something else. Now center, this is basically only gonna look at this very center of the screen here. You can see if I focus, it kinda turns green there. That's the only thing it's gonna be uh, looking at. It's gonna, whatever's inside of that little box, it's gonna focus on everything else. It won't even think about it. Flexible spot, this is a cool one because see the spot that's moving around? I can move this around anywhere if I'm trying to get a person's eye you know, the person isn't moving, I can bring it right up here and it's gonna focus right where that spot is. And again, you can move it anywhere around on the screen and it'll always keep that spot in focus. And that's it with these settings right here. So I usually keep mine on wide just so it can really focus on anything in the image, uh, depending on where my subject is. I don't have to worry about it not being able to focus on it. Autofocus illuminator, I keep this off. It's basically this light on the front of the camera that'll light up, it'll be, it's like a red light. And if it's like in a dark situation, it'll help it find focus uh, to kind of light things up. But I really don't like it, it's kind of annoying. And I'm usually not in a super dark scenario where I'll need it, so I usually keep that off. Autofocus drive speed, I keep this on fast. That's basically how fast the motors move to focus. So. You know, if you're focusing from something close to something far away, um, on fast, it'll basically, you know, go right to it. It'll just snap right to that and, uh, you know, snap the focus right onto the next object. If you do it slow, it'll be more smooth and slower. And basically, you know, if you're focusing from one thing to another, it'll just kind of go uh, just a lot smoother and slower across it. But for pictures, you really want this just to be at fast because you just want you know, whatever you want to be in focus, in focus. You don't want to worry about it slowly going over there. Now, if you're recording videos, it could be different depending on what you're recording videos of because maybe you don't want it just to snap back and forth between focus, if you want it to be slower and more natural. But again, for photography, keep this at fast. It's going to be really fast and speed up the autofocus a lot. And then track duration. So this is 
basically when it's on continuous out of focus and it's like tracking a subject, you know, if there's something that's in the front of the frame, they're kind of moving around, it's trying to keep them in focus. And this is basically gonna be how uh, fast it thinks your object's gonna move. So if you put this at high, this is basically if your object is gonna be moving around really fast and you wanna keep that in focus, you know, if it's somebody running or a car or something like that that's driving, high is gonna always like be looking and thinking it's gonna be moving around fast to keep it in focus. Normal is probably what you're gonna to wanna to keep it at, uh, just for a beginner at least, because it's gonna be a little slower, more precise for keeping something in focus while it's moving around. And as long as something's not flying around the screen, then it's gonna keep it in focus, it's gonna be just fine, as long as you have the autofocus drive speed to fast. Exposure step, I keep this at 0.3, it's more precise for controlling your exposure and your exposure compensation, but that's really nothing to worry about right now in the first place. So just keep that at 0.3 and it's gonna be fine. Now headed over to page four. So ISO, this is something that basically controls the brightness of your image. You can see going, getting brighter and dimmer, but also the higher the ISO is, the more grainy and noisy your image is gonna look. So I really keep this at the lowest I can go with still getting a usable image and usually just, you know, maybe lower my aperture or uh, slow my shutter speed a little bit to get a brighter image rather than raising the ISO a bunch. But automatic is fine and automatic will be perfect for getting started with photography. Uh, but again, the higher it goes, the worse the image is gonna look, and it's gonna be more grainy and noisy. Metering mode, this is basically gonna control uh, the brightness and the exposure of the image when you're on like an automatic mode. So multi is going to look over the whole image, it's gonna find a good median, a good middle ground for how bright the image should be. Uh, and it's gonna consider basically the whole image to find out how bright it should be. If we go over to center, it's gonna look only right at the center of the screen and it's gonna keep just the center portion uh, at the right level of brightness and the right exposure. So if you have a person that's in the middle of the screen that you're taking a picture of, uh, center would be good because it'll always keep that person exposed correctly, but everything else could be too dark or too bright. Uh, it's just gonna focus on the, only the center of the screen. And then spot, again, just like with the focus mode, you can move it around and basically whatever it's lined up with, it'll keep exposed correctly and keep it looking really good. But I keep this at multi, just so it looks at the whole screen. It finds a good middle ground because I can always raise or lower the shadows or highlights uh, in my editing software. But multi is a good middle ground. It'll keep the majority of the picture about where it should be at. White balance, I keep this at auto, and you're really gonna wanna do that for beginning photographers as well, uh, because this basically controls how warm or cool the image looks, depending on what sort of lighting it is, what time of the day, uh, anything like that. And automatic is gonna do just fine. It'll change it depending on what sort of lighting conditions you have, and it's really gonna do fine. But if you wanna mess around with it, you can change it for daylight, shade, cloudy, you know, anything like that, or you can make a custom one. Uh, but automatic does just fine. It really, it does great for most occasions. So right here, DRO and auto HDR, that's dynamic range optimization and high dynamic range. And this, I keep it off, but if you notice that your pictures are too bright in some spots and too dark in other spots, you could turn this on right here at automatic. It'll basically adjust the shadows and the highlights to make the shadows a little brighter and the highlights a little dimmer uh, to make everything a little smoother. And uh, it works pretty well, but I usually keep it off so I can do most of that stuff in my editing software. Creative style, I keep this on standard. Uh, there is different styles, so it's basically like a filter on Instagram. You know, there's black and white, sepia, autumn leaves, basically changes, uh, you know, changes the picture around a little bit, makes it look different. I keep it at standard because, you know, if I want to put my picture on Instagram and add a filter to it, I can always do that. But if you do this, it'll be like that forever. You can't change it. So I keep it at standard and I can always change it and add a different filter after I take the picture. And picture effect, just keep that off. You know, it's already darkened out. You really don't, you don't need that at all. Head over to page five here. Uh, focus magnifier, zoom, don't really worry about that. You can zoom with your lens. And right here, noise reduction, NR. So this basically will allow the camera to get rid of some of the noise uh, if you have like a high ISO picture with a lot of grain and noise, it can help uh, get rid of that, but it does blur the image a little bit. 
Um, not dramatically, but in order to get rid of the noise, it kind of just softens everything up and it won't make it look as good. And you can always do that in something like Photoshop or Lightroom or photo editing software. So I keep both of these off, but if you want to play around with them, you can turn them on and it'll make the image look a little cleaner straight out of the camera if you're in like really dark situations. So lock on autofocus, don't really worry about that. It's nothing you're really gonna wanna use right now. And smile and face detection, I keep that on because basically if there's a face in the shot, you know, if there's a person uh, in, in sight on the camera, it'll try to lock on their face and keep their face in focus, which is obviously what you want. Most of the time you're gonna wanna keep a person's face in focus if you're taking portraits or something. So I keep that on just so that if there is a person in the shot, it'll keep their face in focus. All right, page six, soft skin effect, turn that off. It's like, basically we'll soften the skin and try to make you look better a person, but it just does not work that well. Just keep it off. You really don't wanna do that. Uh, steady shot, you're gonna want that on. If you have a lens like the kit lens, the 16 to 50, it has steady shot, which basically uh, is like a stabilizer. It'll make your pictures less shaky. And if you're moving around a lot, it'll definitely help out and it could fix pictures that could have been ruined without it on. Uh, if they were too shaky, they'd be blurry. So keep that on if you have the option. Uh, basically just does nothing but help out. And then color space, keep that at sRGB. Uh, just don't even worry about it, just keep it at sRGB. All right, page seven, auto slow shutter. That is for videos only, uh, but just keep it off. I mean, you really don't want that. But again, if you want me to go more in depth on stuff like this, uh, let me know in the comments and give this video a like. And then obviously that's for video two, that's for video, and that's about it for this page, or this, uh, yeah, this page up here. So if we head over to settings, we have Zebra. So don't really worry about this if you're a beginner. It's, I'll talk about that in my video, settings video if you wanna see that. Manual focus assist, uh, I usually keep that off. It basically zooms in on the image when you're manually focusing to try to get more precise focus, but I usually keep that off because of something else I'll talk about. For grid line, I put that at a rule of thirds grid. It's good for, you know, making sure things are level and straight, and I should just keep it on. And then auto view, this is basically gonna show your picture that you took right after you take it. So if I, you know, it's at two seconds right now, if I snap a picture right now, see I'm, my hands in front of it, and it shows it, and now it's got rid of it. So it'll just kinda, it's like a little bit of a review so you can see what picture you took. You can set that at however much you want. I keep it at two seconds just so I can check out the picture and make sure everything's good and then it'll go away. Display button, uh, don't worry about that. And page two here, so peaking. This is something that's really good for if you're manually focusing, and this basically is going to put a red outline on everything that's in focus while you're manually focusing. Uh, so, you know, everything that's gonna be in focus, it'll have a red outline. You can't really see it right now, but it's gonna be good, you can play around with it and then change whatever color, but I keep it on high and I put the color at red because red's uh, just something easy to see. So these ones, I just keep that on. Uh, setting effect on for live view display and uh, continuous autofocus area, I turn that on so it'll just kind of show what's focusing. I don't know if you can see those, those uh, green squares, that's basically just showing what it's trying to focus on and what it is focusing on. All right, page three, pre autofocus, just keep that on. Don't really worry about it. Uh, finder and monitor, keep that at auto. If you like using the viewfinder, it'll basically, when you put your eye up to it, or finger like I'm doing right now, it'll switch between them, so that's pretty cool. And you can use a screen or the viewfinder, obviously, or you can change it to whichever one you use mostly. Release that lens, enable that. If you're using a vintage lens, it'll allow you to basically use them. Otherwise, it'll come up with like an error. Autofocus of shutter, keep that on, don't even worry about it. And page four, so, AEL with shutter, um, just keep that at auto. Don't really worry about that either. E front curtain, I keep that off. Uh, if you turn it on, it'll kind of make things a little quieter and do more stuff in electronically. But if you keep that off, it's gonna be the best for just getting the highest quality stuff and uh, you know just the best pictures. Don't worry about these, just set them at that. And uh, page five, so right here, don't worry about these either. Lens compensation, you can keep that at automatic. Uh, it's basically going to sense what lens it's on it and then kind of just change chromatic aberration and kind of just help it out basically. That's all it really does. So just keep those auto and don't worry about these. 
And then these you can really mess around with. They don't have anything to do with actual photo settings. They're basically just for um, all your dials and stuff. Uh, so you can mess around with these and uh, do whatever you want with those. They're really not gonna affect your actual photo quality. All right, so that wraps up the best settings for photography. So that wraps it up with the settings that I use for the Sony a6000 for photography. Again, you can move some of these around, mess around with them, whatever works best for you. Changing anything won't break the camera, so just mess around with these settings, find out what works best for you, and go shoot some awesome pictures. So anyways, if you want to see more a6000 content, I have a few more videos about it that I've already made. Go check those out and subscribe to my channel and like this video if you'd like to. It would really help me out and I really appreciate it. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.